Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, August 21st, and I am back in town from uh, my trip to Columbus, so I'll be telling you all about that. It's a uh, cloudy, overcast, 70s sort of day here today. It's going to get up to 80. Not bad, but I don't have a lot of plan for, for outdoors today, so that's all good. Oh, yeah, so I'll tell you, I'm not the man I used to be. <laughs> I used to, when I, when I was in graduate school, my family lived in Philadelphia, and I had a girlfriend in Philadelphia, and I was at graduate school in Pittsburgh. And I'd come in on the weekend to Philadelphia. I'd leave like Sunday night, six, seven o'clock, drive to Pittsburgh, which was at the time a, a six plus hour drive because the speed limit was lower back then. Uh, get in, go to bed and get up the next morning and go to work. And I had no problems at all. Uh, so I drove into Columbus, uh, which was supposed to be about a seven and a half hour drive, but I hit some construction delays. It took me about eight and a half hours uh, to get from here to, to the pipe show. Uh, stayed at the hotel where the show was, which was really nice. Uh, it's a Crown Plaza. I, I don't remember the, the name of it, but it's right near the Bush Brewery, which is kind of neat. Uh, saw this big tower with Budweiser written on it. That was fun. And, uh, yeah, got in, I don't know what time it was, to be honest. It was, it was, it was late Thursday night. Went down to the bar, uh, to get something to eat. And, uh, had a beer and met a gentleman named T. Craig, who, uh, I had never met before. Pipe smoker, he was at the pipe show, very, very friendly guy. So I enjoyed talking to him for a while. Uh. Got to know our bartendress, Kelly, who was definitely an interesting person. And then I guess I went to bed. I don't, I was so tired. I don't honestly remember. <laughs> uh, got up on Friday, had some fun on Friday. I went out the, to a local park in, uh, in the area. It was called Schwab, maybe Schwab Park. I, I'm sorry. I put it on Instagram. Uh, Schrock Lake was within this park, a uh, nice walking trail around it, so I spent some time there, had a pipe, uh, hung out with some geese. It was a big old time. Uh, then I took a drive out to the local Woodcraft, just because it was there, and uh, we have a Woodcraft up in Allentown, about an hour away from me, and it was pretty much the same, you know. <laughs> nothing, nothing exciting, but it was a it was a fun way to waste a little bit of time until the show got started. Went back to the hotel, uh, had lunch, and then you know, they've got this tent out in the courtyard area where they're, they're allowed to, to smoke. And I thought, well, you know, I'm going to go check this out. And, and, you guys that have been following me for any length of time or that have met me in person know that I'm pretty darn introverted. And uh, in fact, it's to the point where it's probably something that ain't quite right. You know, I'm, I'm almost certain I'm, I'm uh, one of these Asperger type guys because, and it served me well, you know, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not claiming disability or anything, but uh, boy, if I can focus in on one thing, I'm great, and, and that's served me very well in my, my career. Uh, if, I, if I'm talking to one person one-on-one, -on -one, I'm fine, but you put me in a crowd, and I'm a mess. I just, I hate parties. I hate these meet-and-greet type things. I'm just not comfortable with them. And, you know, if I don't know anybody, it's really hard for me. And, you know, so, but you learn over, over time, you know, and I'm 57 now, so I've had a little bit of practice. You learn that you, uh, you you have strategies. So you go in. There's all these tables, and I say, okay, well, I'm going to go out there because I'm looking through a window right now. <laughs> okay, I haven't actually gone into the courtyard. And I say, I'm going to go out there. There's a couple tables that just have one or two people sitting on. I'm going to go to one of those less populated tables. I'm going to sit down, load a pipe, and probably somebody there will say, hey, how you doing? And you know that'll get things rolling, and it'll be fine. It'll be just fine. 
Uh, the fear is you walk up to a table with eight or ten people at it and you say, can I join you? And they say, no, this is a private party. Go away, you jerk. You know, that's that's what's in my mind. It just never happened. But you know. Anyway, I, 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 okay, I open up the door and I go walking out. And as I'm walking across, this guy stands up, I have no idea who this person is at this point. Still some distance. And he waves and he comes walking over to me with his hand out. I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> This man has saved my day. It was Donnie, Hillbilly Piper, and uh, so good to see him. No, I'm sorry, it wasn't. I'm sorry. Donnie was there, but this was actually St. David, uh, David uh, from St. David's Pipes. Uh, but both Don Donnie and St. David were there. They both recognized me. I sat down with them. They introduced me to some other folks at the table, and the uh, the party was on. You know, it was it, that that was. That was the icebreaker I needed. You know, so thank goodness those guys were there. Great talking to uh, to David and Donnie. We, we had a real good time. Uh, both wonderful guys. And if you're not subscribed to them, I'm going to have a bunch of links that they'll have to put below. I hopefully will remember all these. And by the way, it's going to be tough for me to remember everybody that I met because uh, there was a lot of folks there. Good, good time. A lot of folks from the, the YTPC showed up. So I hung out with, with Donnie and David and uh, we smoked some pipes and, and just chatted and there were a couple other guys there. Um, met met a gentleman named Terry, an older gentleman, really, really good seasoned pipe smoker, nice guy. Uh, his wife was there, I don't remember his wife's name. She she was, uh, she, well, she, he, Terry said she was more of a pipe collector because she never smoked them, but she did buy them. <laughs> so that was kind of neat. And there was a few other people there, and I'm just I'm just not going to remember names because it was just so many, so many people. Uh, so sitting there, uh, David wanted to go take a nap. I wanted to go take a nap, to be honest. <laughs> and I see uh, Smoke and Fireman Cody and uh, Brian Doran, Beans Three Sixteen, walk in and uh, wave to them. I said, "Well, I got to go say hello to them." So I pack up everything and I go and. Wind up talking to them for a while, smoking a couple pipes there. Uh, Donnie joined us, so Hillbilly Piper came over, and then uh, Cole, Big Country Briar, showed up, and we hung out for a while. And then I, I decided I had to go and just decompress a little bit. I wanted to uh, wash up a little bit because I had been walking around in the woods and everything, and. Uh, Got ready and came down. The pipe show was going to start shortly, so I came back down, hung out with those guys for a while, and then the show opened up. Uh, it was 5 o'clock. We actually got in about quarter till 5. And, uh, boy, that was fun. Uh, now, I I know mo most of the guys that I talked to there were there with one of two purposes, sometimes two purposes. They either were buying tobacco or they were buying pipes or both. And to be honest, I kind of went with the idea of I'm going to look, but unless something really knocks me out, I'm not, I, I just don't need pipes and I don't need tobacco. By the way, what I'm smoking here is my pipe-like object. And uh, I'm smoking some, this is a Milan tobacconist. R. Carter Hall blend. It's their Carter Hall match. This was a kind gift of uh, Cole, Big Country Briar. So thank you, Cole. He gave me this. He also gave me some of the Sugar Barrel match, uh, which is an excellent match. So if you're looking for Sugar Barrel and you can't find it, give uh, give Milan Tobacco and Tobacconist's uh, Sugar Barrel match a try. It's the closest one that I've tried. I haven't tried a lot of matches, but uh, most of them have been just awful. This one. Uh, it's pretty darn close. It's got a little bit of a chemical note to it, but it's pretty darn close. So, yeah, I, I go in and, you know, I just, I wanted to meet people. I wanted to say hello to folks. Uh, I wanted to look at things, but I wasn't really interested in buying pipes or tobacco. I was interested in, in looking at Briar and uh, Ebonite and things like that. If, if it was there, unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of that kind of stuff there. So, yeah, I started making the rounds of, of the tables. I saw some beautiful pipes. Uh, met Tim West, which uh, I've talked to Tim multiple times on the phone. It was great to actually finally meet him. His son, Brandon, was there, chatted with him a little bit. So that was a good time. 
uh, Larry Blackett. I, 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 he was there with his tamper display, and uh, we we chatted a little bit. I one thing. Well, I'll show you. I, I bought two things actually, but it's Gumby. <laughs> yeah, to have Gumby. So I got I got me a Gumby tamper now, and. Uh, yeah, Larry, you know, I, I talked to Larry for a bit. It was really busy. And because the doors had just opened, I think he was actually a little bit late in setting up. So he was a bit frazzled. Uh, I think his wife was there. I'm not, I, I didn't actually get to chat with her, but I, I believe that was his wife. And uh, just talked briefly with him, bought the tamper. I said, I'll catch up with you later, Larry. You, you know, let you go handle your other customers. And then yesterday, uh, he came up to me, and he was he was awfully upset. He he didn't realize he didn't recognize me, and uh, I it was fine. You know, we 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 had a, we had a nice chat, and I meant to get back to him, and I didn't, and you know. So, but anyway, we talked for a while longer. It was great to see Larry. Uh, what a wonderful guy! And uh, you know, it, those tampers. I never thought of myself as a tamper guy, but he's turned me into a tamper guy. So, if you don't know Larry, buttons for your britches on Instagram. There'll be a link below. Uh, I'll also put a link to Tim West's uh, site, JH Low. Uh, walked around, uh, looked at pipes. You know, I saw some beautiful, beautiful pipes. I got to handle pipes by makers that I've admired for a long time. You know, people like uh, Jay Allen, uh, Jeff Grasick. Uh, oh boy, uh, Tim West. Some some of his pipes. Uh, Tyler Hines, I think. Uh, Scotty Purcell, uh, Scotty makes, man, she makes beautiful pipes. They're not my style, you know, these long, thin shanks, but gosh, they're, they're just gorgeous. And she was manning the table for Steve Norse, uh, who couldn't make it, uh, who's the guy, Vermont Freehand. But Steve had some beautiful briar, uh, gentleman named, uh, Paul Perry, pipe maker, uh, passed away last year at the age of 101. And uh, Paul had a large stock of aged briar, and this wound up in the hands of, of Steve Norse, Vermont Freehand, and, and Steve's been selling it. And there was a table full of briar. Uh, there was uh, Calabrian, Albanian, I think there was some Sardinian, and Grecian. Uh, but I, I picked up 10 blocks, I and mean, this is just gorgeous stuff. I don't know if you're going to be able to really admire the grain there, but uh, you know it's seasoned. It's 40, it's been in the shop for 40 years, so it's rare that you're going to find this. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I bought myself 10 blocks, and uh, Scotty Purcell was manning that booth, and she kindly taught me how to fold shopping bags. <laughs> That uh, was great, but yes, yeah, she taught me a method. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate it because I don't have a bag with me. But those, you know, the shopping bags that you get from the grocery store, you, you basically accordion, accordion them up at the bottom, pull it through your hands, make a loop, tie them, and now you can just pull them out and they're ready to go. Puts them in a much smaller package. Uh, I don't know. My wife keeps a bag, one of those bags, on the door handle of the basement, and it's filled with those bags. So. I'm going to very, be very excited to teach her the, the trick that Scotty taught me that her mother taught her. So, you know, we're, we're passing this along. <laughs> anyway, that was a lot of fun. And now I know how to tie shopping bags. Ah, uh, yeah, just really good time. Um, other folks I met. So I already mentioned uh, Donnie and, and David. Uh, so Brian Doran. Uh, Beans 316, Cole, Big Country Briar, uh, Smoking Fireman Cody. Got a Smoking Fireman sticker that's going to go up on the sticker wall behind me once I clear a path to it. As you can see, there's a lot of junk back there. Uh, people are so kind. Uh, Donnie brought back this beautiful drying tray. Look at that. This is hand carved uh, Philippines. Uh, he visited the Philippines a couple months ago. And I forget what, I think he said this was Nira wood. It's just beautiful grain on that. I really like it. Got some nice Chitoyans. Uh, and he, he kindly gave me this, and he also gave me one of these. I don't know what these are made out of, but this is like an industrial strength <laughs> light breast. 
but I like it. It's it's nice and solid. Those other ones, they're great, but sometimes I go to put a pipe in them and they you know, flop over. This thing is going to rest like a rock. So Very nice. Some sort of reinforced strapping that he used. Uh, I don't know if he made these or not. And then it's a, a nut and bolt sort of arrangement here with a... I don't actually know how he did this, but anyway, very cool. And, you know, the generosity of people. I took a couple of tins and about, oh, five or six baggies of, of stuff that I, I wanted to, to give out to folks. And I uh, thought, well, you know, and it's all, it's all good stuff. And some of it's, you know, not available anymore. You know, I took some number 10 Downing Street. I took some uh, Union Leader, uh, original sugar barrel. And, you know, I, I thought, well, I, I have more than I can smoke, so I'm going to get rid of some of this. Not in a mean way, but, you know, it's, it's a good thing because it's going to pipe smokers that will appreciate it rather than winding up in the trash when I'm gone. Uh, and, you know, so I'm going to have less to that. Well, I think I wound up bringing back more tobacco than I took because uh, folks were just very generous. I showed you what, what Cole gave me, and um, I met Eric, blue collar pipe smoker. He he gave me some stuff. He had some. Uh, I think it was called Fireside Chat from Ken Byron Ventures, and a uh, little sample of some very good burly Low Country. No. Uh, I can't remember it. It's the HU Burley blend that everybody was really excited about. It's it's beautiful stuff. So thank you for that, Eric. Uh, and it was great to meet Eric and his dad. Oh, we had a nice long chat, and uh, just so good to see see him in person. And uh, yeah, Jim uh, Corvette Jim showed up uh, to just before I was leaving because I, I decided I had to. Getting back to my old man problem, I was tired. Um, we went out to dinner on Friday night. So it was, uh, ah, WKRP, WKR Piper, Odie was there. Got to, got to meet Odie, so that, that was great. Went out to dinner on Friday night. Uh, Brian Duran drove, uh, so Beans 316, Big Country Briar. Smoke and Fireman, WKR Piper, and Cane Rod Piper all went out to dinner uh, to a restaurant named Schmitz, uh, a German restaurant that was recommended by someone in the live stream. Might have been Corvette Jim, because uh, he, he was yelling at us for not getting cream puffs while we were there. <laughs> but uh, we found the place. Uh, great time. That's what the picture is at the, the front there. They had a, what I've called an umpa band, like a German music band. It was just an accordion and a tuba. Uh, unfortunately, we we're sitting pretty close to it. And after about five minutes, the novelty wore off. <laughs> it was kind of hard to talk because it was so loud. But then they took a break and uh, we had we had a great time at dinner, some really good German food. Um, I had a hunter schnitzel, which is a pork cutlet sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, just just wonderful time. Uh, big, big, big beer. Uh, 32 ounce uh, dark house beer. Wonderful stuff. And then we left and drove back and I got back to the hotel and realized I didn't have my phone. And uh, I thought maybe it was in Brian's truck. We went and checked. It, it wasn't. So I went up to the room in a bit of a panic because the, it's my GPS. I have to get home somehow. Plus, it's my way of contacting everybody that I know. <laughs> so, I, and fortunately, I do know my phone number. It takes me a while to remember it sometimes. But went up to the room, dialed my number. So, and, oh, actually, Brian called the restaurant while, while we were, after we realized it wasn't in his truck. And they said nobody had turned in a phone. Went up to my room, called my phone, and somebody answered. And I said, who is this? And they said, oh, this is, uh, I'm at a restaurant. The gentleman left his phone. I said, ah, that's me. I'll be there. So I went and drove back. Um, I had an old Garmin GPS that I have not turned on in five years. And I wasn't even thinking because I was so panicked about this. So I get to the car. I'm like, how am I going to find this place? <laughs> I was sitting in the back seat, not paying attention. How am I going to find this place? It's like a 20 minute drive away. So I go, I get the garment out of the trunk, I plug it in, it boots up, it found the restaurant. So 
drove there. They're closed. I bang on the window. Somebody comes out and they, they, my waiter comes out. He's got the phone. Thank goodness. I plug it in, put the hotel back in and drive back. Uh, while I'm gone, I'm getting messages from folks. Everything okay? Did you find it? Now, of course, I don't have the phone, so I'm not seeing these. Uh, and it, just as I'm pulling into the parking lot, I get a phone call from, from Cody uh, asking me if everything's okay. You know, I just, it was just so kind to people to be concerned and, and helpful and, and, and all that. So I was really, really nice. And it just shows you how good of a community we have. You know, it goes far beyond the the gifts, uh, the, the, the tobacco, the pipes, the, tr the drying trays and all that. They're wonderful, but uh, yeah, we got good people that care about one another. And uh, so thank you for that, guys. I, I appreciate it. They were all hanging out front. We had a pipe out front. Some guys were smoking cigars. We moved back to the courtyard, uh, met my buddy Andre, Andre T. I can't remember Andre's last name, but it begins with a T. Uh, I know I've met Andre before. I don't know where I've met him before, uh, <laughs> but I know I've met him before. We chatted for a while, uh, and eventually I wound up going to bed about one o'clock. Part of being an old man is that you don't get to sleep in. I, I, on Friday morning, I said, I've got nothing to do on Friday, so I'm just going to turn off the alarms and I'm going to sleep as late as I can, because normally I get up at six o'clock in the morning. So, you know. But as long as I'm up early enough to get some breakfast, I don't care. I woke up at 5.50. Could not go back to sleep. <laughs> so Friday night, I get into bed at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning. I don't remember the last time I was up at 1 o'clock in the morning. And I say, okay, well, the show doesn't start until 9. You know, I've, I've already been to it, so it's not like I'm desperate to get in there again. I'm just going to sleep. 5.58, I get an extra eight minutes. <laughs> so I, I ate breakfast, went out to the courtyard and sat for a while. That's when uh, I met Eric and uh, Eric's dad, blue collar pipe smoker and uh, Mr. Blue Collar Pipe Smoker. And uh, some of the other guys were there, uh, Corvette Jim showed up and uh, spent some time with them. And then I went into the show for a while and guys, I, I'm walking around and I'm thinking, you know, I really wanted to wait because I knew that Andrew Pipefool was coming in and I, I had hoped, I wasn't sure, but I had hoped that Jeff uh, Tamper Tantrum was coming in for the show and they both were going to get there around lunchtime and I just couldn't do it. I knew that if I didn't leave and I left about 11, there was no way I was going to make it home uh, in, in one day. I would, I would have to get a hotel because I was just not going to be able to, to do the drive. So I left and I got home about 6.30. So I made pretty good time coming home. The ride home was uneventful other than bad drivers, which there's bad drivers everywhere. I decided to get some Chinese food, which, um, you know, I haven't, haven't had a lot of takeout food, uh, but I was kind of bad this weekend, you know, because you have to be, right? I mean, <laughs> you're not gonna you're not gonna be making a salad in your hotel room. And yes, I know you can order salads, but I was I was having fun. So, so I'm hungry. I got to get some dinner. I'm gonna get some Chinese food. So I, I called this place that I used to go all the time. They're right down the street from me. Uh, but I have not been to this place since pre-COVID. Uh, and they apparently have a new policy, half the food, twice the price, which was a bit of a shock. But yeah, well, uh, eight, tried to watch something on television, but fell asleep and went up going to bed at 930. <laughs> so yeah, I'm old. But I'm home, and uh, all is good. I got uh, coffee, my own coffee this morning, which I missed. And, uh, yeah, just just back to, back to normal life, whatever that is. So, 
It was a great time. Uh, I'm really glad I went to the show. Uh, unfortunately, Richmond's been canceled. I don't know if you got that news or not. We got the news while we were at the show. Uh, it's kind of odd that they canceled the weekend of the Columbus show because I think a lot of folks and vendors that were planning on Richmond would have gone to Columbus if, uh, if they knew Richmond was going to be canceled. So that kind of stinks. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, there is going to be a show in Albany, New York on October 1st. I believe it is called the Columbia Pipe Show. And that's being put together by Nate. I do not remember Nate's last name. Uh, who's the guy behind uh, the K. Woody Renaissance thing. I uh, met Nate briefly. Andre introduced me to Nate. And we're going to talk. And I'm going to be hopefully getting you more information about that show. Maybe even uh, having Nate come on on a Friday to, to chat about it a bit. We'll see how that goes. It just depends on how our schedules align. So, yeah. Um, that's the pipe show. If you haven't been to a pipe show, go to a pipe show. It was it was well worth it. It was, it was a great time. And I'll tell you, the people are the reason I would go back. Uh, not, not the pipes, not the tobacco. I just don't need them. I like looking at them. <laughs> and I had a couple people get a little mad at me for looking and not buying, I have to, I have to say. Uh, it was, it was playful, I think, I think, but, yeah. So, Sunday, don't have my dogs, they're at the kennel, can't get them till tomorrow, they don't, they don't do pickups on Sundays. My wife's in Pittsburgh for her dad's birthday. She'll be back tomorrow, I think. So I got a bachelor uh, Sunday, Monday coming up. Got to work tomorrow, which is, is good. Be good to get back to work. Today, I don't have much to do. Um, my, my Sunday routine is um, shot to heck because I don't have the dogs here with me. I might work down here for a while. I got some shelving, some wire shelving that I'm going to put up right behind me, crossed across this wall, uh, running. Why can't I get this right? Running this way. There we go. And that'll get some stuff off the benches and things like that. And uh, yeah, get back to uh, back to work down here. Got some forty-year-old briar that needs to be. Uh, carved so see what happens so I hope you're all having a fantastic Sunday looking forward to the week ahead a big thank you once again to all the kind folks that uh, I got to spend some time with this week all the folks that were kind enough to uh, hand me tobacco or stuff uh, <laughs> I feel like I should say no because I don't need it, but it's so kind of you to think of me. And uh, I feel like I'd be insulting you if I said no. Uh, next pipe show, I'm going to come better prepared. In addition to the tobacco, I'm going to have to bring some other stuff with me because uh, I got I got to repay the kindness in a better fashion. Have a great Sunday, folks. Take care. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye now.